All right, everybody, what is going on? And welcome back to another video. Welcome to, well, it's a recap of the 2020 NFL Combine into what's just occurred over the weekend, which is the 2020 NFL Draft. And I'm looking forward to it. I hope you guys are too. You've probably watched it. I haven't. I've done exactly what I normally do. When when a series of video comes out, when it, when it, if it's games or if it's interviews or if it's highlights or if it's anything, anything that comes out that I know, I genuinely have a real interest in watching that and I really want to bring these videos to my channel. I will purposely not read a thing, not watch a thing, not look at a thing. And if I do see something, it's like I consciously or unconsciously don't take it in. Because I'm like, there's no point, I don't want to do that, I don't want to know anything before watching these videos, and that's exactly how we come to you as today. So, with that being said, um, I haven't watched any of the draft, and it's been extremely hard, it's, it's happened over the last three days. But one of the reasons why I didn't do that is because I hadn't watched all of the workouts from the combine. So today, we've got a job. We do have a job to do. And the job is to get my head around the top players at the combine, and then go and watch the draft with this information still fresh in my head and I can't wait to do it. So guys, uh, I'm going to be completely open and honest and transparent. I have a entire plunger of freshly made coffee. I've got my laptop. I've got a whole selection of videos that we're going to run through. I'm going to get the screen recorder going and let's get into this shit. Now, I'm going to address the, the elephant in the room, my hair. If you've watched the previous videos, you would have seen um, this <laughs> this uh, creation, you could call it, in the middle stages, okay? It was between brown and blonde. Now, what I'll say is that I'm actually not, I'm not, you know, I'm not complaining. I actually quite like it. I don't mind it. I really don't. So I don't know how long I'm going to keep this hairstyle, but the way that it's looking at the moment, it's not a bad color. It's not too yellow. There is parts at the front, but that's because it's wet. If you look on this side, that's nice and like Nordic. Um, ice white blonde and, and I quite like that so if I could have that color all over my head it might just be the lighting I'm not sure I'm still a little I'm still a little bit self-conscious but we're working on it here we go okay so with the combine I watched the 40 yard dashes and I knew at the time that that's probably not going to give me the information I needed so I knew that I was going to wait till the draft I could go back watch the best of the best of the workouts get to know you know a little bit more about the players and then I guess start to make my own mind up as to who these first picks are going to be. And then watch the draft, as if it's live. So with that being said guys, the first video of the day is best of quarterbacks workouts at the 2020 NFL Combine. It's had 1.8 million views, it was brought out exactly two months ago, and it's 13 minutes long. Let's get into it. Field drills are complete at the combine. What'd you see, Daniel Jeremiah? Uh, first of all, I'll start off by running a 468. I mentioned these corner routes a little bit earlier. Get a chance to see them now. Uh, watch how easy this just comes out. Just an explosive arm from Herbert. We've been Let's try again. Okay, Justin Herbert, Oregon. He looks tall. But that's not surprising to me anymore. Justin Herbert's on-field drills are complete at the combine. What'd you see, Daniel Jeremiah? First of all, start off by running a four-six-eight. I mentioned these corner routes a little bit earlier. Get a Fifty chance to yards. See him now, uh, watch how easy this just comes out. Just an explosive arm from Herbert. We've been talking about him just letting it rip, let it go. And on these corner routes, we got a chance to see him do just that. Hang on your back leg. Look at the air. Nice. Up there. Just really pretty balls. You see him, again, drop back. A couple hitches on that one. A real tight, firm ball. Rich there. It's always interesting looking at where their hands and their fingers end up after throwing. And the reason I look at that is because the first time I ever looked at a video trying to learn how to do a spiral, I got told that once you let the ball go, your throwing hand is almost going to come down as if it was like a seat belt across your body and it's going to be as if your throwing hand ends up in your opposite side's hip pocket. And that's one thing that struck me. And that's similar to his motion. Not to cut you off, but know, as, as DJ was talking about, a lot of times when you watch Herbert throw, that's a nice like route. He's teaming. 
you know, we always say as a quarterback, you just got to get back and let it go. You got to trust yourself and let it go. But a lot of times it looks like he's aiming. You saw that on that first slam. He's like aiming. You know, Kurt, Justin Herbert never took a snap under center in college. And so this is all brand new for him as well as it is for a lot of these guys. The ability to get your weight going back and get set on the top this of the is a nice, This is so a nice route. Okay, this is all about the quarterbacks, but all <laughs> you guys know already. The only people I'm focusing on are these wide receivers running routes. Um, I love it. Talking about shotgun, leading to obviously this non-playing season, beginning with this 2020 combine. Nice throw there by Herbert. Justin Herbert. Holy shit! He is over six feet six inches tall. He's a monster. Much more comfortable, really pushing this ball down the field. Kurt, you... 236 pounds. He looks. That's almost 100. That's almost 110 kg, and he doesn't look big. It's amazing how that extra like four to six inches on top of a six foot guy, how, mu how much weight that actually adds to a, a body. It's. You see him starting to let it go a little bit down there. Yeah, I mean, I think this is where he finds his. Oh room. my so much God! What a throw! Yeah, I think this is where. That looked effortless. From the ten. He finds his groove, where he's not worried so much about the footwork. To the thirty-five. Look and those types of things, and he can just kind of set and let that ball go. But you're right, he's just flicking his weight. Yeah, he likes that. He's I mean, it looks he's laying it out there. Normally, we talk about forty-two to forty-four on these go routes. He's letting it go a little bit farther than that. And again, on the t from the ten to the thirty-five. What a ball! To show what a ball! A little bit, but so uh, love work out in the next group, and, and you've heard his name with Indianapolis. Well, if they go out and get Philip Rivers or Tom Brady, maybe that changes their plans for what they're going to do. Where does Herbert go? What, These what, are just bombs. For business. Is there anything to the Borough Bengals Saying. scenario? That's a nice throw by Herbert right there. Where might he wind up? You've heard his name, you know, mentioned prominently with the Dolphins. So, like the Miami Dolphins. Thanksgiving will the never be the press same. conference for the Egg Bowl. <laughs> Herbert again. See, I'm watching this and I'm thinking the closest thing in rugby that we have to a ball travelling in that trajectory, having a guy in a rugby team on the wing, just like a wideout, run forward and catch the ball on the on the full. We have a play that is similar. It's just the ball gets kicked, not thrown. And the player that's going to catch it has to stay behind the kicker. So that's it. That's as if this wide receiver has to stay behind the quarterback until the quarterback releases the ball and then he can go forward to try and catch it. That's the basis of the rules around rugby. A little bit trying to guide that one. Just just let it go, man. Let it rip. That was better. That one's better. You're always looking for that turnover too, right? We say on these deep balls, you want to tip your shoulders and you want to throw it up in the air with the same follow through so it gets that turnover like a punt. That last one was nice. Some of these are coming out too flat. That struggling to get the oh. turnover. You know, there, there were probably a number of Incredible. Things. Here he goes. I thought they played an exceptional defense in 19. Well, that's a, a great ally. Six, six play. and a quarter, 236, uh, clearly, and 469. 54 miles an hour. Justin Herbert, 60. In certain parts of Indianapolis, I... 10-5 in the broad jump. That's pretty good. Showed some athleticism today, Charles Davis, 36 in his birth. And that's something that... That's something that, what, is impressive? I wonder where he went. That's the cool thing about this, is we're watching this, and literally, today, we're going to be able to see where they went in the draft. Earlier, How good. The drill, it bounced to the receiver, because he's trying to be measured, instead of just letting it go, just getting back and letting it rip. And that just was, for our uh, audience, just for our audience here, you know, Kurt and I was talking about this earlier. I mean, these quarterbacks... So Jalen Hurts... Ah, shit! I don't want to see it. Uh, oh, fuck's sake, Oklahoma. So taking their time to throw that slant. Now, if you're playing with me and you taking your time to throw that slant route, I'm like, listen, dude, that slant route is getting way up in there with those linebackers. That's a headache. New anniversary of Tom Brady and the old. It could have been the Hoosier Dome back then. I don't even know if it was the Arsenal. Oh. <laughs> he did a great job. It's Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts, you know, a lot of people, Bucky Brooks are, is somebody that's, you know, you, you, you might have something with him. I think he could come out of this thing when it's all said and done, what he can do as a playmaker, and you're seeing now. 6'1, really 220. Football, um, 
he's got some things to clean up, but there's there's a lot to work with there. His ball, his ball doesn't seem to be quite as long. The issues that Jalen Hurts has sometimes is vision and anticipation, which you're not going to really see in this setting. But we saw the athlete that he is, and you see him throw the football. The ball is live. It jumps out of his hand. And watching him go through the drop right here, Kerr, I think his feet, when you stack For some him, reason, he reminds me of a basketball pretty, player. I don't, think there's any I don't know if it's about his look or what, but he looks like he should be playing uh, point guard. Watching at the top, not relaxing, not coming up. Um, but you're right. I mean, the biggest thing is this kid is an athlete. He reminds me a lot of a Russell Wilson type player. That It's a little bit of a gamble there, potentially. Herbert doesn't have any of those issues. So if it's close, if you have those guys very close. Honestly, I think it's because of his haircut. <laughs> Because a lot of football guys have at least something going on on top of their head. I think I have two a, a pretty good bit ahead of Herbert, but those are the type of discussions that are happening with these teams. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the yeah. tape of him earlier this week and just thought, man, if there was no questions about health, man, it was neck and neck with him and Joe, and, and I could see a lot of guys go the other direction. And you just start to wonder, oh, Kurt, when did you have elite quarterback hair? When did you finally get you know, that was not one of, one of our blessings, me and you, Rich, uh, ever had that, uh, that elite quarterback here. Okay, well, I've just completely missed something. I was talking about his hair. They're talking about quarterback's hair. Now, why is that? Are they saying that a quarterback has to have a pretty out there hairstyle? Because I'd, I'd have to agree. Excuse me. <laughs> I had flow back in the day, sir. Really? Yeah. Like elite quarterback here is what we're talking about? Elite anchor. Okay. Okay. Elite quarterback here. Man, I can't wait to see who drafts Jalen Hurts. We, we've got to we've got to get the side by side because people were, and I think he wanted some time really to evaluate. There's, there's a lot that goes into. I'm expecting a four six eight. Physical. I can't remember. It, oh. Preparation. Four fifty nine. And the grind of six months of doing. And, um, boy, do you need to be accurate for this throw, I guess, too, is Jalen Hurts. For him today, on the field, and... Ooh, not bad. ...plays as well. Ran a 4.59, broad jump of 10.5, vert 35 inches. Jake from. Here we go. Well, you were saying Justin Jefferson to add the tape that we've seen to the 4.43 that he officially ran. That is quite a, a night so far. Here's Jake Fromm of Georgia. Kurt, have you, uh, you had a chance to study from? I have watched him. And, you know, I think we talked a little bit about it, DJ, too, is that in control, nice knows catch. what he's doing. Is he from? Let's see a long ball. Interestingly enough, alphabetically after Eason. Ooh, beauty. From doesn't have a big arm reach, but you will see with him timing, anticipation. He's had this same arm his whole life, so he knows how to navigate around some of those concerns, get the ball out early. Nice catchable ball. I, I don't think he fits every team. Um, but I think there's a handful of teams. He reminds me of Derek Carr. And don't tell me you don't think the same. In the south on the west coast, you know, play inside. I mean, uh, I look at a team like the Atlanta Falcons. You try and get somebody to sit behind Matt Ryan for a couple years, maybe with the payoff down the road, and I would imagine... And they were giving me something to okay. dry off after I served them that meal out of my mouth gate. I understand. I understand that the, the hometown college team. I, I, Atlanta makes sense to me. You look at, at the oh, you know, they yes. want to stay with, with their one of them. And if they are, and let's say they decide it's a marriage, right? They said oh, decide it's a marriage. Time. Rare, rare company. I was going to guess Vincent Jackson, but I, I guess Vincent Jackson. Long uh, bowl. He had to be close. He ran a, oh, Jack just said he ran a 4 4 6. Here we go. I missed it by that much. <laughs> this guy is flying down the field. Jake Fromm underthrew that one a little bit. Kurt, Kurt, I used to cheat this thing. I had such a noodle arm, man. I had the quickest five you've ever seen, and I just popped that thing up as fast as I could. <laughs> well, we always say on the deep ones, early with air is always better. But feel for how they spin the ball. It's Jake Fromm. Let's go, Jake. Yeah, Jake. Georgia pulled it off. What? Jordan Love. Alright, here's Love. His feet look pretty good, Kurt, for they now, haven't done a ton of it. You know, I, I watch it, and the big thing is I, I don't want to see his feet ever come together. You know, when you get to the top of the drop, you want to see 
that base so you stay in a passing position. You see it right there. Just a little push, small little hit. That's March 18th or something? That is correct. So how many how many yards is this route? It looks like it's 15 yards into a, a 90 degree turn. We're going to be having a free agency cut. From the 15 to the 32. Coverage coming up. Short order. 17 and yards. Okay, that comes out nice from Jordan Love. So Matt Patricia's comments after it was discussed that Matthew Stafford might be traded. Correct. Yes. And his stance on it versus what we've heard from the Raiders. They're correct. That's my that's my point. Hey DJ. Hey, yes, sir. With a Jordan Love, you talking about him moving up. Is he a guy that plays or is he a guy that sits back and allow him to develop and mature a little bit before you throw him out there? Oh, he's a red shirt for me, Steve. I'm going to redshirt him for a year. And Beautiful ball, and that is. Him with the big payoff. Down. We'll lose that intensity. <laughs> uh, we, we've never never needed love more than we need love. Uh, nice, huh? Let, Great throw, Jordan Love. Let love rule. Ian's report that he's, you're, you're looking maybe top ten for Jordan Love. I mean, it's not the Ooh, crazy guy. It's my yeah. player coming into the combine. Right. So these needs that, Steve that out. look good yes. enough to be you professional. Can those other ones early, and you can swing back around for some of these wide receivers. They, they also have some office alignment on their roster who are not agile, who are not the type of office alignment that Matt Rule likes to use in a running game. These are guys who are heavy, lean. They lean that on receiver was they explosive. They aren't guys with swift feet. They aren't like the Ryan Khalils. These are guys who are... Um, Really stiff in the hips. The Cleveland, the Cleveland Browns coach said he was just about to tell him that until I came in there. Oh, nice. During the broadcast. Could that receiver actually see that ball? To tell him that. Yeah, he's looking up now. Okay. Until I came in there. Yeah. During the broadcast. That is not easy to do. Half million dollars past that threshold. Oh, oh my God. As we're sitting here. Are these? Are these his best throws, or every single one of his throws? Because uh, <laughs> some of these catches, some of these routes run, are pretty incredible. And I'm thinking, if he's just throwing bomb after bomb after bomb, all of these quarterbacks, I mean, there hasn't even been one drop pass. But I'm pretty sure that's because they're only including the highlights. But anyway, wishful thinking. I'm going to think that we're seeing every single one of their passes. And I'm going to make my judgment on that. $20,000 shy of surpassing last year's record total already just one night into the combine that's phenomenal so whatever you can give every and i thank those who already donated i don't think you're that is that big, way, I, <laughs> beautiful sight absolutely beautiful sight those massive bombs and it's quite cool because we can see we can see the actual trajectory of the ball without you know the crowd and the the smoke and the the flames, the fans, the colours, the flags, um, and everything else, like drowning out the ball. I don't think that it's an empty stadium. We can see the ball. We can hear everything. It's quite a cool concept, and I just cannot even imagine how cool it would be to be there as an athlete. Although I was thinking before, imagine all these top quarterbacks, top running backs, wide receivers. As they come together that first day, as they come together to, um, you know, they'll be looking around, like, you know, sussing each other out. They would have known the, the, the top prospects from the other schools and all they've done throughout these previous three years or whatever is just played against each other. But now they're actually competing for spots. It's just that dynamic. It, it kind of reminds me of an athletics, like a school athletics tournament. You know what I mean? You go through the whole year, seeing all these guys in the playground, hanging out after school, doing whatever, but there's that one day where we all come together as athletes and we're all competitive. And it, it can either bring out the best or the worst in someone. But I just love it. Heads that big, by the way. <laughs> You're staying late. Here's Jordan Love. He is a fun player to watch. Where's his time? Fascinating, fascinating evaluation. The Jacob Eason. Proctors, specifically. Apparently there's some, 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 some floating Princeton Proctors out there. We do. Washington. Keep an eye on you. Well, we just got some official 40 times, and two of them officially faster than the unofficial times that we had. 
Devin DuVernay of Texas and Memphis is Antonio Gibson, sub 4-4-4-3-9 four, 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 for those guys. You were talking about him guiding it and doing other things early? Because when he does, he is something special. And one thing I do like about what he's done already. Let's have a look at that catch. Because when he does, he is something special. Special. The one thing I do like about what he's done already, weighed in at 236. I think he should be 240 or beyond to make sure he has enough body armor on him to take the hits in the NFL. It looks like a big man. Day. Check it out. Peter Schrager's guy, Jacob Eason. All right, now here's the deep throws that Peter Schrager was telling us to keep an eye out for. Jacob Eason. Really? Let's get it! Oh! A lot. Chris Rose used the word howitzer, and I was talking to a Pac-12 coach. Well, that's the first deep ball that I've seen dropped. Yesterday about him, and the first thing out of his mouth was, that dude has a howitzer. And then we started talking about him and some things he needs to work on. So That's exciting, man, to hear he's got a massive pass. You know, see him move around in, in the pocket a little bit more, feel pressure, um, be a little bit better and more consistent with his touch and accuracy. But arm strength-wise, this is top shelf. You want to have the ability to five quick hitch ball out before they turn around. You're throwing it, you're coming right between those cones, right back at the quarterback. So you see the back of the head, you let it go with a nice little touch, but firm. They should be snagging it out of it. Hey, hey, you know, that's why I receive a guy to also. I want to see a guy come out of this break, and I want to see his feet placement when he catches the ball. If he still has one foot in front of the other, that means he has to take a few more steps before he can get turned side, correlate to a three-step drop, a five-step drop. And so it's the... When I start with young quarterbacks, it's always like I'm always going to start them under center so they can start developing that clock in their head on the timing of the routes on the outside. And you see that often with guys that are primarily in the gun is they lack timing because they never develop that timing in their head to know, oh, this is when that ball needs to come out on a run through or on a deep A lot goal. of these guys, man, they're not running through as fast as they can. I think it's important to do that. And that's why it's so important to start guys under the center and be able to correlate that stuff and develop that timing that we always talk about, that clock in our head. Then I'm fully with you. These throws down the field have been much, much better than their underneath stuff. Well, Claypool, we just saw on that route there, and it was a great report from Kim Jones giving the backstory of, of Chase Claypool. Another guy who's six foot six. Network researcher extraordinaire to my left just handed me a note, Daniel. Since 2003, only two wide receivers have come to the combine. Measured at least six foot four, weigh two hundred thirty-five pounds, and run the dash in under four four five. One of them's got to be Calvin Johnson, and the other's Chase Claypool. Wow, that's it. Since two thousand three, you know how many times do you watch a game and you're you're like sounds like a lethal wide receiver. That's for and sure. he gets hit, and, and sometimes that's troubling if it's a quarterback that doesn't. That's know who he is. A man's unblocked, and I, and I think you do a whole season watching Burroughs. I think uh, Jacob Eason would get ticketed. <laughs> two miles an hour. Yeah, I can't catch that. <laughs> All right. Okay, so that was a quick look at the uh, the quarterbacks. Now, let me just jog my memory. The first guy was probably the most impressive, if I'm remembering correctly, and his name was Justin Herbert from Oregon. He had a very consistent long arm, no drops, but I am going to hold my judgment because I think... Joe Burrow went number one, and we didn't see Joe Burrow work out. So we're going to hold it there. In the next one, guys, we're going to look at the best of the wide receivers. I have no idea who that is, but he's looking very determined, and it looks like he's just made a, a nice clean catch. Let's just hope he follows through. Anyways, guys, have a, have a fantastic day. We have absolutely no time to lose, although I have tried to do this outro clip six times. So really, I've lost two minutes already. And that's two minutes too many. Two, <laughs> two minutes too many. Alright guys, I need another sip. I'll see you in the next one for the wide receivers.